All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I am, my name is Lisa Martin. I think I met some of you last January, but um, I have been working in conjunction with Megan Conover to develop the basic and intermediate scan files. Um, and Lisa, Tim, and Megan asked me just to talk briefly today about um, an overview of those files. So starting with why they were developed and kind of a description of the files, I wanted to give a caveat that, um, you know, when I think about direct selection, I, I equate it and um, to taking an airplane to a place. You get there as fast as possible. It's the immediate route. When you look at mouse simulation like a joystick, it's kind of like you're driving a car. You get there pretty fast, but you have to stay on the road. And then when you look at scanning, um, it's like taking a bus. You know, it's pretty hard. And if you miss your stop, you're out of luck. Um, and so when developing a scanning file, I just wanted to mention that I think we all have different routes that we would choose to take on a bus. Um, for example, I would take a bus that took me to yoga. My husband might take a bus that took him to a concert venue. We all go different places. So this, these files are meant to be a guide. They're not going to be a best fit, the best bus route for everyone, but my hope is that it's a starting point for people. Um, so looking at the basic file, it was developed as just a simple place to start. Um, and keep in mind that I'm coming per, from the perspective of children's. I work at Children's Hospital. Um, so that's the bent that these files are created under. Um, and where we start is looking at requesting. It comes in around 12 to 14 months of a typical kid. So it's really, really early. And it's the first thing that we start with. So when looking at scanning, I would start with teaching cause effect um, and looking at partner assisted auditory scanning and then looking at requesting through use of a device. So I would probably start with this want page um, and then explore vocabulary on here. Again, this vocabulary can change based on the person. Um, this just happened to be some of the items that were popular with kiddos that I've worked with. Um, and so scanning is tough. You need a lot of bang for your buck. So this file was developed primarily as a phrase-based file. And one strategy that I used was promoting an increased variety of language through some activity-specific pages. For example, if you go to bubbles, they can then direct the activity of you know, blowing bubbles. So that's kind of where I would start with basic requesting. Um, however, I don't want to get stuck there. And so pretty quickly, I would want to introduce some different language functions. So um, under the talk page, there's, if you look at more and all done, there's you know directing and protesting and then some commenting down here and then also sharing information. These are all language functions that occur really early. Protesting is at 12 to 24 months, directing is around 24 months and commenting is at 18 months. So just keeping in mind that we wanna encourage lots of different language functions. Um, and then if you look at about me, Another strategy that I used was when you share information to end it with a question. Or a, a leading sentence, you know, so you can get some interaction going. Um, the other thing down here under guess what, this is hidden when it comes, but when you uncover it, it's, it's a basic social script. It's cause effect. So guess what? I did something pretty fun. Do you need a clue? It only happened once a year. It was my birthday. What about you? When is your birthday? So it's kind of errorless learning um, Please, and sir. promotes a lot of social. Yeah? Can you turn the volume you off hear me? your computer? Um, yes. We might be is able that better? Be able Let's see if I'm, we can hear in the editor. Oh, OK. Um, so that's just a basic social script. So it's not different than using a step-by-step -step communicator. It's cause effect, um, but it gets a lot of participation going. Um, caveat is that it's not a great strategy for someone who perseverates on a switch because that will just encourage perseveration. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then as far as adding more vocabulary, I'm just going to uncover the rest of these. I think it depends on each person. It makes sense to uncover it in order because, again, this was created with the intent of auditory scanning. So if you close your eyes and listen to the auditory cues, you want them to be in the same order. 
Um, it doesn't have to be that way by any means when you teach it if you want to think about what the goal is. So if my goal is to have someone describe something, then I, I could potentially get them to the describing page and have them describe it. If my goal is navigation, then I probably want to keep these in the same order. Um, so again, something for a therapist and family to figure out. So basic needs are pretty basic. Again, these can be changed based on each person's needs. People just goes to a blank page and it's just one page. Um, for people to fill in. Groups, um, it's just a few categories. Again, these can be modified based on people's interest. Um, we set them up for now, they're alphabetical. Uh, this could change based on frequency of use. If you always wanna talk about a dog, that could be first too. So again, something that can be modified. And then describe. So describe goes straight to feelings, which is a, a little bit odd, but we did that because in the intermediate scan, describe goes to several different describing words, so we wanted to keep it consistent down the road. Um, and you'll notice they're, they're color-coded around the outline, so in the intermediate scan, um, good feelings, okay feelings, bad feelings, and then body feelings are color-coded in the, in the same manner when we break them up um, in the intermediate scan. Actions are just based on um, developing play skills, pretend to play, and what's motivating for kids. These will definitely vary person by person, and it just gives folks the ability to direct communication and initial ability. It's, it's limited. The whole thing of basic scan is it's extremely limited. And then we do have one um, core words page. So this needs to be set up to be row column. So it would scan functions, actions, prepositions, and then scan across. Um, and just a reminder, kind of the most of the basic scan is set up linear. So it just goes straight across along the line. So if you kind of equate it to opening up your kitchen pantry, everything is right in front of you. You're going to scan everything. Um, whereas row column is more like you're going to a grocery store. So if you want to eat cereal, you're going to go to your cereal aisle. So like actions, and then you go across, um, across that way. So that's kind of the summary of the basic scan file. Oh, one more thing. So this, the um, beginning button um, is in this location because it was kind of a compromise. I like to put it first if people don't perseverate and double hit on their switch when they're, when they're scanning, um, because if they do, then they just are constantly flipping pages. Uh, you also want to put it somewhere where they don't have to wait forever. So as far as efficiency goes, it's better to put it closer to the beginning. So this is something that I change based on each particular person. Um, and you can also change the name of it to menu or leave it at beginning, whatever, whatever makes sense. Um, and then as far as when to move on, I think it's, you know, like I said, this is primarily phrase-based, a lot of participation and interaction. When you're looking at wanting to generate more vocabulary using single words, and when you're limited on what vocabulary you have access to, that's when I would look more at the intermediate scan file. So, um, as you can see, it's the exact same. Um, the menu is the exact same as the beginning or the basic scan file, and that was intentional to not to have to relearn the basics of it. Um, the difference is that there's significantly more vocabulary under each category. Okay. Are you so under talk, it goes to greetings, and these are all categories. Um, and greetings, what we, I tried to do here was use navigation um, to promote efficient turn taking. So, hi there. Hi, are you? I'm good, thank you. And these are, this was a little bit tricky as far as figuring out where to have it navigate to. We had hi navigate back to this greetings page because a lot of times people will say hi, what's up or what's going on. So we had it come back here. That is obviously something that you can switch if you want it to just to go back to the, the main menu page. Um, and then, hey there. What's up with you? so this, instead of doing just a social script through cause effect, now there's choices embedded. It sounds like fun. I have needs. Do you want to hear it? And so uh, the communication with partner would say, yeah, tell me about it. Today, I hung out with my friends. Oh, that sounds cool. 
What about you? What are you doing today? Oh, I'm going for a hike. It sounds like fun. So there's that embedded turn taking um, within the greetings. Can you talk? Are you with me? Um, as far as tell you, that's just you something. that's just basic. You know, I want to tell you I'm more all done. Stop it. Come here. Whatever. Um, whatever an individual kind of wants to tell you quickly. Can you talk? Are you with me? What I think, what I think is a bunch of comments. Um, there's research studies out there that I read a long time ago that said that um, people that use augmentative communication that use non-obligatory comments, so these things like, really? Yeah, that's cool. You know, oh, that's too bad, um, are seen as more intelligent and people communicate with them more frequently. So I've always made it an effort to really try and um, focus on these non-obligatory comments um, for that reason. It just helps people be perceived as a better communication partner. So again, these are color-coded. That's cool. And Are you with me? looking at questions. I have a question. The friend questions are programmed in the same like social script with embedded choices manner. Um, What's new with you? It sounds like fun. And then the basic WH questions are programmed um, to give more choices. And when possible, I tried to keep it consistent. So like who, who is it, who is going? Who is going? And then um, Can you talk? Are you with I have a question. When are we going? So keeping the it go, that kind of thing consistent when it made sense. Can you talk? Are you with me? Fix is um, just a category for communication breakdown. Um, we could name it something else. It fix just kind of made sense to the kids that I was working with. So um, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is not on my talker. Please ask me questions to figure it out. Um, and you could expand on this. Um, I think for adolescents or adults, I don't know if this is the category where you'd put it, but you could take a video of someone positioning them correctly or feeding them correctly and saying, hey, you know, you're doing that wrong. Please, please do it in this way. Come watch something like that. Um, Can you talk? And then. And then again, about me. Tell you something about me. It's similar to the about me on the basic page. It has the social scripts, the interactive ones with embedded choices on news from home and news from school. And then uh, when they're sharing information to have um, a question. My parents and my brother and sisters. Tell me about your family. A leading question to get that interaction going. And um, needs stayed the same. So. That's the exact same on the basic. People, there's just more categories. So there's more, there's room for more vocabulary and categories of people. Similarly, there's more groups, um, more vocabulary, and then we left room just to expand, you know, because I can't, nobody can anticipate the vocabulary that we're all gonna need. So leaving room for growth. Um, here's the described category I mentioned. So the feelings are still here. Um, and then they're broken up into the good, okay, bad, and body feelings. Um, something that I played around with was this can be done. I left it as a linear scan. You, if someone does have vision and it's easier, you could also program it in a row column manner so that each like good feelings would be here, okay, bad, body. Um, to the scanner, it's the same number of switch hits. You, what the reason why I left it with linear is because to the person supporting them, if it's in this manner, you can get them to a page pretty quickly and help them if navigation is not your goal. Um, if it's left in row column, you have to use the switch to actually help them navigate. So that's why. Um, but some people prefer the row column because you have a better visual field of what's actually under the vocabulary, if that makes sense. And that applies to a lot of different categories. So then we just also included colors, adjectives and various prepositions, ones that were common, and then again, left room for more vocabulary within each category. So actions was a tough one, to be honest. Um, and what I ended up doing was dividing it actions, like frequently used actions into categories based on body part, because I didn't really know how else to do it. So things you do with your head, and then um, obviously things you do with your eyes. These can all be modified again to to verbs that make sense to that specific person. 
And then core words is a bit more comprehensive and starting to put words together. Um, and then being able to hold speak the message bar. So that's kind of an overview of both of the vocabulary files. Um, and then I just wanted to review some of the kind of programming tricks that I used. The first one was kind of the social script, the no fail, kind of like a step by step. So it's cause effect, but lots of participation. And then the next step would be the social scripts with those choices embedded. Remembering when sharing information to end it with a question or a guided you know, sentence to get more information back from the communication partner. Um, using the navigation to guide the social interaction. So when someone says, hi, how are you? To then get to a response based page because you know what's gonna happen next versus having that person navigate by themselves. Um, even if someone is not an auditory scanner, I tend to leave auditory cues on just to teach the vocabulary and remembering to use the label um, versus the entire message due to the, the timing of the scan. Um, and I'll turn on the Zoom feature most of the time, even if someone has a cortical visual impairment because they can, the visual, the Zoom feature does tend to increase their visual attention. Um, using the message output to teach navigation, so let's go would get you to the go page. Um, keeping the programming consistent, so leaving that menu or beginning button always in the same location. And then remembering to program strategies for advocacy and communication breakdown and the ability to share information efficiently, even as um, people become more advanced and are generating using single words, we still want those phrases, frequently used phrases for efficient communication, especially with folks that scan. Um, and then on the flip side, remembering to um, use generic language just so, for greater flexibility. So generic language similar to like, what is it? Um, and then also core language so that eventually folks can generate what they want independently. I think that about wraps it up.